In selecting teeth for the patient, we're going to be, first of all, making a judgment on the size. The size of teeth, you might remember, has been determined that the size of a maxillary central incisor should be approximately one-sixteenth the size of the face. That means one-sixteenth the size of the face from the pupils of the eye to the bottom of the chin and one-sixteenth the size of the face of the bizygomatic width of the face. We can do that with a gadget that uh, manufacturer furnishes for us that gives us automatically that size. We can do that by placing the nose into this part right here and the pupils of the eyes right running right through this line. And then if we move this lower up into place so it touches the bottom of the chin, the top edge of this little gadget here will show you the length of a central incisor and in this case would be 10 and 1 half millimeters in length. We can move the side one in until it touches the zygoma and we find that that one is going to be roughly eight millimeters, about seven and three quarters millimeters in width of a central incisor. So this will give us the size of teeth by automatically converting one sixteenth the size of the face into a size of a central incisor. In addition to that, as you remember from the lectures, the faces can be uh, categorized into square tapering and ovoid and combinations of square tapering and ovoid. This gadget will help us because it has parallel lines running vertically that will help us when we put it on the patient's face to see if it's a square tapering or ovoid face. And from the hairline or along about here to here to here, this is virtually straight with just a little bit of taper to it. So what we have here is a square tapering face. So we can go, we can take that information now of seven and three quarters to eight millimeters wide for a central incisor and a face that is approximately a square tapering face. And we can go to our description of teeth that comes to us from uh, the supply, uh, supply company and we can look for teeth that might fit that category and we see that the teeth basically are shown to us in square teeth, square tapering teeth, square ovoid teeth, tapering teeth, missed a page, tapering ovoid teeth, ovoid teeth and here's a group that are square tapering ovoid with all of the characteristics in them. If let's go back now we said our patient basically was a square tapering uh, patient and this category of teeth right here, the square tapering teeth, we should be able to find something in this category that would be close to what we might like for our patient. If you look at the description of these teeth, you'll find in the first column after the teeth to the right of each tooth here, you'll find it says the length of the central incisor without the collar. In other words, that's the length that we found to be ten and a half millimeters. Then we find the next column is the width of a central incisor and then this, this third column is the width of six anteriors when they're arranged on a curve. The last line that you find, column that you find over here is the lower anterior tooth, the mandibular anterior tooth that would coincide uh, with the maxillary anterior tooth. Now let's see what we have in the way of width which we said is about seven and three quarters by ten and a half. Uh, we don't find many seven and three quarters millimeters teeth. We find one here that's seven and three quarters by ten and a quarter as far as the length. That's pretty close, not too bad, but that's an awfully small tooth. Let's go down, uh, see they go up eight and a quarter, nine and three quarters, a ten millimeter wide tooth, ten and a quarter millimeter. Now here's an eight and three quarters and here's a seven and three quarters again. We get down into these. Basically the seven and three quarters teeth are 21C and 22C. Uh, 22C I don't think comes in bio blend because that is a bio form mold only. So the only one that's listed here that's seven and three quarters wide is this 21C. Now that appears to me, my, my judgment is that that's a little small. So I'm going to go back and check that board again uh, and see if I got that correct.
No, I did not get it correct. When I look at it from here, I'm looking at eight and a quarter to eight and a half. That's a little more like it. So, let's go back to our book again. In the square taperings, square tapering, let's look for eight and a quarter to eight and a half. Here's an eight and a quarter, which is 21F. Uh, eight and a half on 22E. And these are continuation of square taperings over here. There's an eight and a half here, and that is a 22G. And we can come on down. Let's see, we have any others. There's an eight and a quarter, which is a 24F. And an eight and three quarters, which is getting a little large now for that size, and a 21X. Okay? So now what we want to do is we're going to look at some of these molds, and we can find those molds on our mold board. This is the mold board that comes from the manufacturer. And all of these teeth have samples of them in the mold board. And in the square tapering range, we have these teeth as they come from the manufacturer. And the idea now is to find the one of these teeth that we think is going to fit best for our patient. According to the dimensions on the thing, uh, the, the 22E was one that would work, which is this tooth here. And 24F we thought would work, which is this tooth. It was 12 long, it's too long. So this one is too long, 22E. That's a good possibility right here, 22E. Now let's see what we can do with that. Could you get me a small piece of rope wax, please? What we're going to do is we're going to take teeth that are a possibility and we're going to arrange them and try them in the patient's mouth to see what they look like. Yeah, just, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. You can take a small piece of rope wax and make a T on the on your on the end of a tongue blade like so. And now we can take the teeth from the mold board and 22E was the one that we had in mind. And we can place those teeth on this, and I like to usually use three teeth from a particular mold on one side, like the three, ladder, uh, the three anterior teeth from the left side, or three anterior teeth from the right side. And we can place those teeth onto that rope wax. And then we can take some from another mold uh, that might be uh, suitable, and... Uh, Let's try 21E, which is a little longer tooth and a little larger tooth. And let's just try that for argument's sake and place three of them on the opposite side now, the right ones on the opposite side. And I may go to that. Mm -hmm. And now I have two different molds of teeth set on to, onto this T that I've made from a tongue blade, and we're just going to place them under the patient's lip and see which one we like the best. And I don't think there's any doubt about it. I like this one better than that one. This tooth seems a little bit too squared and a little bit too rounded. This one is more masculine. And I would like that better than I would the one on his right. This one would work better than this one. Size-wise, it looks pretty good. Now let's try difference in size and just, just see what happens here with it. Now we've looked at mold and we thought that that mold looked pretty good. A square tooth looked better than a tapering tooth. Let's try a tooth that's too small. Just to see what it would look like. That according to the dimensions now, this tooth is too small. Now let's see if we can tell the difference when we look at this as to which one we would like the best simply because of size. And certainly the one on the patient's left looks more in keeping with the size of his face than the ones on his right. The ones on his right appear to be too small. So we can take those off, eliminate that. One other mold that I find very useful, particularly when you're dealing in the square, the square tapering uh, teeth is if you can go to the square tapering ovoid tooth which we found in the mold board or in the description of teeth 
and that is this series of teeth, square tapering ovoid. There's a couple of molds of those that go very well. One of them is 75E, which is not far from the perfect dimensions that we were be looking for. And then another one is an A84, which is a weird looking tooth, and particularly look at the laterals. They look as though they have a curl to them that isn't proper. We can show you that off of the mold board. That's seven, uh, A84, and look at the lateral on this A84, how curled it looks. But that makes a beautiful arrangement, particularly for a feminine setup. If you want to make a very soft feminine setup, that one does very well. So I'm going to try the 75E mold, which is sort of a, almost a universal mold that we use a lot of. I'm going to try that and see if we like it any better than 22E, which was our original selection. So let's put three teeth on it. from mold 75E. Now, one of the characteristics of 75E, it's a fairly nondescript cent central incisor, square tapering ovoid, but it has a very large lateral to it. But now let's just see what this would look like. See if we can make a determination as which of these two we would like best as far as size or shape. Do we have a preference? I've got them falling apart on me here, so I've got to straighten them up a little bit. Size-wise, I tend to like the one on his left a little more than the one on the right. And the one on the right looks slightly small. I'm going to look at it from there. I tend to like the one on his left better than any, which is 22E. All right, with a few simple determinations with some teeth on a wax T like this, you can make a couple of quick decisions about the selection of teeth. First of all, by just one or two selections of looking at very squared looking teeth or very angular looking teeth, you can tell if you want to go in that direction or looking at very ovoid teeth, whether or not you would like to go in that direction. The more ovoid teeth are usually, the more feminine they'll look. The, the square or more angular they are, the more masculine they will look. Um, so we can make the determination on shape with just one or two selections as to which way we go with it. And as far as size is concerned, with about two or three uh, uh, selections of trials of, of different sizes of teeth in the mouth, we can get an idea of what size works best. And for this particular patient, we determined that we like the size and the shape of this tooth, which is mold 22E. Now the next thing that we want to do is to look for a color or shade of tooth. And this we get from a shade guide that comes from the manufacturer. And they generally come in six different shades. If you look at these shades, you'll find that they're 100, 102. The top row of them are really fairly nondescript teeth. Yes, they vary in color from one tooth to another, but they're not characterized tremendously like you find the bottom row of teeth. This bottom row of teeth, they have little check marks in them. Uh, they have stain spots built into them that look like they're teeth that are quite aged. And so you have to sort of determine from your patient, do you want to put a tooth in there that uh, is, looks like it has been aged quite a bit? If you have a very masculine type patient that you would like to put a little characterization into it and make it more masculine, you might want to consider one of these teeth from the bottom row which have uh, stain marks in them and check marks in them and so on. If you want to go to a softer type of arrangement, you might want to consider the top row of teeth. As we know from the description of teeth that, uh, uh, about color of teeth, the older our patients get, usually the darker those teeth would become if they were natural teeth. And we want to somewhat follow those guidelines and considering the age of the patient as to the type of tooth we'd want to put in there. We also want to look at the complexion of the patient. If we have a patient who is extremely fair skinned, such as our patient is here, we might want tend to go to a little lighter tooth than we would as far as shade is concerned than we would if this patient were uh, a more ruddy type complexion or a darker complexion. So, okay, we're looking at a patient who obviously is going to need a lighter type of tooth despite his age, not meaning to insult you and tell you how old you are, <laughs> but his complexion tells you that his, the coloring in his teeth would not be as, uh, as deep a coloring or as much saturation of color into the teeth and you would that if he were 
uh, had a very ruddy, dark type complexion. He's a very fair-skinned individual, so you are going to have to uh, uh, find a color of tooth that it would go along with fair skin. Um, so basically, we're looking at fair skin, meaning lighter shades of tooth than you might normally look, and we're uh, looking for a patient, uh, looking at a patient that might uh, tend to be a little bit, want to make those teeth a little bit on the masculine side as opposed to teeth that if you had a woman sitting there and you'd want to make them very soft and a feminine type of arrangement. So what we're going to do is we're going to take different samples of the shades from the shade guide and I'm going to try them in our patient's mouth and we're going to see which one of them we like the best. I like to look at shade selection with a patient in a comparison type method and the way I usually do that is I'll take two shades at a time and I'm going to hold them up to his face and I'm going to immediately have a like or a dislike for one or the other of those teeth and the one that I dislike I'm going to get rid of and usually in about three trials of trying two different shade, shade, uh, shades of teeth with your patient, or about three trials of it, you'll come to a decision that you like this type of tooth as opposed to another type of tooth, and you'll, you'll form that very quickly. One other thing that you want to consider, and that is in the complexion of your patient as to whether or not the hues of teeth that you're going to are going to be in the yellow range or are they going to be in the gray range. Generally, patients who have uh, brown eyes and a little bit of brown sclera to their eyes will tend to have more of the yellowish shades of teeth. Patients who have gray or blue eyes will generally have uh, tend to go a little bit more to the gray shades of teeth. So we're going to try considering the eye coloring that he has, his complexion, his age, we're going to try to see if we can find a tooth that would be compatible for our patient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the middle of the road. We'll start with about the middle of this top row and get a couple of these shades off of here. And let's go down to the bottom row just for comparison's sake, and we'll get a couple of shades off of the middle of the bottom row. Let's just see what they look like. We may not like any of them. We may like all of them. Who knows? We'll see. Let's start, first of all, with one from the top row and one from the bottom row. And all we wish to do is to determine which one we dislike. So we're going to try those here and open a little bit there and obviously the tooth that is on his right or our left this tooth is much too yellow and that yellow does not fit well with his complexion so we're going to get rid of that one regardless of what it was that happened to be shade 114 which is a fairly dark color of tooth so we're going to get rid of that one now 106 is the one that we chose from those two it has some gray in it it also has some yellow but it has more gray than did the 114 the other one we'll try with is 113. Now, 113 has a lot of gray in it. Let's see which of these we like the best. Obviously, the 113 has far too much gray. That would, it looks like an old tobacco chewer. Okay, that you would not, would not go well for him. The 106 looks much better than did the 113. So we'll get rid of 113. Now let's try some more from this top row and see what happens. Let's try 108 and see which we, li which we like. Uh, my opinion is I like 108 a little better than 106. 106. 106 is a little bit too gray for him. I like the 108 a little bit better. That's just a, just a, a judgment. That's all. Okay, let's try some others with it and see what happens. I'm going to take two more off of the top row. We'll take 104 and 109. We're going in either direction as far as saturation of colors from that 106 that we, or 108 that we thought we liked. Let's try the 109 with the 108 and see which one we like the best. And gee, I find troubles uh, determining which I like the best. Uh, if you stare at the blue just a minute for reset and then go back to them, I find that this one does not look as good as this one to me. So you see we're narrowing our selection of teeth down very quickly just by finding trends of which way they go. Again, I'm having problems uh, seeing it, so I'll reset the eyes by staring at some blue. I see this one before this one, I like 109, but better than I did 104. So I've come to the conclusion at this point that 109 is probably the best selection that I can come up with. Now, there's one other thing that I want to do as far as selection of teeth is concerned. I want to take 
those teeth that I have selected on my own without consideration of his old dentures, and I want to compare them to the old dentures to see how much change we're making. If we're making a drastic change, we might want to talk about that. We might want to compromise and go back to something to what he's used to if we're making a drastic change. If it's a subtle change, then it doesn't matter, and usually they'll work very well. So let's take his old denture and see what we have. In the first place, his old denture is an old tooth that uh, when you look at them, you see they're sort of a deadpan color. They don't change color much within the tooth. Uh, this probably was the, uh, a uh, brand of tooth. They're porcelain teeth, and those teeth more than likely were one that was manufactured by a dent supply company. It was called New Hue teeth, and they did not have a very much variance between one portion of the tooth and the other. This is the one that I selected. As you can see, it is much more lifelike. It has a lot of gray in the, in the incisal edge, and the incisal edge is very similar to the total color of the entire tooth of his old denture, but other than the incisal edge, we get into a little more lifelike, a change of color when you get up towards the gingiva. It gets a little bit on the darker side when you get up to the gingiva, and that in itself causes uh, a more lifelike appearance within the teeth rather than having them all one color as these old dentures are. So basically what I'm saying is that the incisal edges of these teeth are very similar to the total tooth of the old denture. In my opinion, this will make him a much more lifelike appearance for a denture than will if we had something uh, more the deadpan color of the old denture was. So let's see where we go from there as far as, as uh, uh, As far as uh, size and shape is concerned now, let's look at the central incisors because that's usually the ones that have the biggest impact on us. And as we can see, the size of them is very similar. There's very little difference in the size. So size and shape, those teeth will work quite well. So we've determined now that the size of the teeth is going to be very similar to the old denture that he had. The color of them is going to be uh, the incisal edge will be similar to the old teeth, but the body of the tooth will be a little bit more lifelike and it has a little more saturation of color into the body of the tooth. So we're going to be using mold 22E, shade 109, as our preliminary selection of teeth. And when we see our patient the next time, we will have the opportunity to try those in the patient's mouth and see how well they work and if they fit our needs aesthetically. J. Leon Williams uh, taught us that a patient's teeth actually somewhat match their face form. So if we can figure out the face form of a patient, we will know somewhat what the, the shape of the teeth should be. This doesn't always hold true, but it does for the most part. As an example, if you are working with a man and would like to make him more masculine, you might tend to lean a little more towards old, or towards square shapes than you would ovoid shapes. If you're working with a woman and you would like her to look a little more feminine, what you might want to do is to tend to go to a little more ovoid shapes as opposed to square shapes. We have at our disposal a gadget that is manufactured by a dent supply company, the TrueBite division. It's called a tooth indicator. And this gadget basically, because it has parallel lines along the vertical part of the board will help us in determining the shape of the face. We also have some little gadgets that if we raise and lower this to lower the lower part of this up to the chin and lower the, uh, raise the upper part of that, move it into where it touches the uh, zygomatic arch area, this will give us the, sh the size of the teeth. The size of the teeth we found through uh, research over the years is that a maxillary central incisor, which is the key to determining the total size of the teeth, that maxillary central incisor uh, is one sixteenth of the bizygomatic width and it is also one sixteenth of the length of the face, and that being from the pupils of the eye to the chin. So what we do basically is we can place these on the patient's face and determine the shape of the tooth and the size of the tooth. Okay, now we're going to place the face board over the patient's face 
line the midline up, with the M for the midline, with the midline of the face, and get the eye slots even with the pupil to the eye. And by moving in this this lateral till it touches the zygoma, we'll see that the size of the tooth is slightly larger than eight millimeters. And we move it up from the to the chin, and we see that the length of the tooth is approximately ten and a half millimeters. We also can utilize this board to determine face shape by looking at the parallel lines. And we see by looking at the parallel lines that the patient, patient is somewhat square-faced with a little bit of taper involved with it. So it's square and tapering, and the patient being female, we may want to consider placing a little bit more ovoid character into it if we can find a tooth that matches that. In addition to the information gathered by use of the tooth indicator board, pre-extraction records can be a tremendous help in creating good aesthetics. Photographs, pre-extraction casts, and several other devices are helpful in this process. We see in this photograph of our patient made when the patient was in her early teen years that the form of the teeth was square tapering. We also see that in the arrangement of the incisors, the lateral incisors were slightly depressed from the position of the central incisors and the canines. The space between the right lateral incisor and the right central incisor could be included in the arrangement or it could be eliminated. In this next photograph, made when the patient was approximately 30 years old, we can see the natural support of the lips. This will be a tremendous help in positioning the teeth for a good aesthetic result. Now that we have determined the approximate size and shape of the anterior teeth needed for a good aesthetic result, we can refer to the brochure furnished by Dent Supply Company that gives us the shapes and sizes of the portrait teeth. It appears that mold 22E fits the criteria needed for our patient. Now we can remove the sample teeth of the mold 22E from the mold board and arrange these teeth into the TruFlex selection rim. Now that we've selected the teeth by use of the information that we got from the tooth indicator, we found that mold 22E looked like this should be an appropriate tooth for the patient. So we want to try this in the patient's mouth and see if it's becoming to her. So what we're going to do is we're just going to slide those teeth, after they've been arranged on this little uh, true, uh, true flex kit, on this little form, and we place those teeth in the patient's mouth and make a determination if those, the size and shape of those teeth are going to be good for our patient. And yes, I think they're very becoming to the patient. I think this will make a very nice set of dentures. Now we can compare the mold of tooth that we have selected, compare them to the patient's old dentures to see if there has been a change. And it appears that the teeth are very, very similar and perhaps even the same mold as the dentures, her old set of dentures. So it appears as though in the old set of dentures, a good job was done on selection of teeth. And we've come out with a mold that uh, by not, not even comparing it to the old one, that is very similar to the original mold. Now that we've selected the mold of tooth that we wish to use, we need to select the color of teeth that are going to be used in the new dentures. So I usually start this out by asking the patient, how did you like the color of your old dentures? They were, I would hope they could be a little bit whiter okay. and maybe a little bit more translucent. Okay, in other words, you felt that the old dentures were, were not quite translucent enough. Is that particularly in the biting edge of them or throughout the entire tooth or what? Mm, throughout the whole tooth. Okay, a little bit more. In other words, that tends to lead us to need a little bit more gray in the tooth than perhaps we had in the original teeth. So let's look and let's see what we have on here that might fit that. So I'm going to just take this to the patient, and I'm going to just come along and look, and it appears as though... This tooth might fit the bill. 
and that tooth might fit the bill. And let's just see which we like the best. Now just lean your head back a little bit. Okay, the one on your left has a little bit more translucency than the one on your right. The one on your left is a B2, and the one on your right was an A2. Let's see this again now, looking at those, and yes. The one on your left now has a little more translucency than the uh, one on your right, and I think they're a little bit lighter than your original dentures. Your original dentures that you had when you came to me are a little bit on the yellowish side. These have a little bit more gray into them, and that gives them more of a translucent uh, appearance to them. And we look at your eyes, and you have blue eyes, that would tend to lead us to go to the gray, grayish hues just a little bit. Not into the real gray hues, but just enough to make it give it that appearance of being a little more translucent. So that's the one that I come up with that I think would look best in there. And that one is called a B2. So you can see the difference in those two. Mm -hmm. All right, now at this point, it perhaps would be a good idea if we compare this to the old denture to see how far we are from the shade of the old denture and if we've made the improvements we wish to get into it. As we can see now when we compare the shade guide tooth to the old denture, that the tooth that we've selected is less saturation into it. The hue itself is a little bit different in that there's a little bit more gray into it. That gives us the appearance of the tooth being a little lighter in shade and being more translucent. I think this will work particularly well for this patient because one of her desires was to have the tooth to have a little bit more translucent appearance to it. The type of denture-based material that we're going to be using in this set of dentures, this Lucitone 199, is manufactured by Dent Supply Company. They provide us with a shade guide. The material comes in several different shades, and they provide us with a shade guide that we can match fairly well the shade of the denture-based material to the tissues in the patient's mouth. So what we do is we take the shade guide material that we have, and we're going to try those into the mouth and try to just get an idea as to whether or not those tissues match. And that one is a little bit red for her tissues there. That one's a little too light. And this one, which is Lucitone 199 Light, seems to be the one that matches her tissues, the mucosa, best in color. So that's what we're going to be using in processing the dentures for the patient, called Lucitone 199 Light.